Joining us now, member of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees and the incoming chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Democratic Congresswoman Karen Bass of California, and it is great to have you on this morning. Thank you. We have a lot to get to, but you, you started with a great question offset. Are we going to still focus on the children at the border who were separated from their families? Yes, we are. We'll start with you. Where do we stand? Are you in touch with lawyers who are working to reunite these families? Uh, do we know how many kids left that we're talking about? Well, first of all, I really appreciate you for focusing on it. My big concern has always been the kids that were separated, will they ever find their will parents they again? Ever? Especially the parents that were deported. I and then know. the other concern I have, because one issue I've worked on for years is improving our child welfare system, which is already overburdened because of the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough foster homes for those children. And so I know that many of these kids from the border will eventually wind up in foster care. Will they ever find their way home? And you know, you can only be in foster care for a short period of time. After that, parental <clears throat> rights can be terminated. These kids could be adopted and never find their families. Well, and the again. hypocrisy <coughs> of, of Donald Trump, of all people, uh, suddenly taking a tough line on illegal immigration. There's a story in the New York Times talking about a woman who cleaned his room, exactly. changed the sheets on his bed, fluffed his pillows, dusted his room. Exactly. Not only did she work for Donald Trump mm -hmm. uh, and, and clean up for his family, uh, but also people that worked in the Trump Organization helped her evade authorities. She said so she, she was honest about country. it. She, she wow. said she was undocumented. And so he goes right. from benefiting and profiting from illegal immigrants to suddenly deciding to be the hanging judge Th that's to right. separate you, children from their parents. And you know, the other thing I'm really concerned about are the teenagers that are in these tents oh because you know that they've had, they had to ramp up so fast. They didn't do background checks on the staff that are working there. And so there have already been cases of molestation and abuse, and you can only imagine that that's going to continue. This continues. This is exactly. still happening right now. Exactly. For people who think it's over and they've been fixed because they stopped the policy, there are children's lives, Michael Steele, mm -hmm. hanging in the balance right now. There are, and, and, and you, that is one piece of many big pieces and you're going to be tackling a big piece today with James Comey coming in to uh, sit down in a closed door hearing. One, what is your expectation uh, there and two, what safeguards are, will the public have that we're going to actually know what transpired uh, in this hearing? Well, the safeguards that I think the public will have is that there is a commitment, which is why he agreed to testify, there is a commitment that we'll get a transcript within 24 hours. Why won't the, why won't the Republicans <coughs> allow cameras to go there? Why won't the Republicans allow Americans to see this hearing? Because I don't think that they want the public to see the theater that's going to take place. Now, I've been there in the previous closed hearings and it is theater and I think frankly they're a little embarrassed because they know the clock is running out they also know that they've provided virtually no oversight over this administration which I believe is going to change next month and so this is their last hurrah so what do you expect to happen at the hearing I'm not much to be honest with you I expect for my Republican colleagues to grill him over and over and over again about the same subjects I know they're interested in Hillary's emails and what else they can investigate and go along that direction but I really don't expect much and I do think that's the other reason why they don't really want the public to see mm -hmm. because there's not going to be much substance there so and I think it'll be easy to see through. Your re Republican friends have turned James Comey into a straw man. Do they? Have you ever asked them off the record back in the cloakroom? Have you ever asked them if they understand that James Comey actually helped elect Donald Trump? <laughs> With that yeah, letter, that's, with that's that a very good press question. conference that violated every norm uh, of past FBI uh, behavior, he helped elect exactly. Donald Trump. Exactly. No, you know what? I haven't asked them specifically that, but I will tell you, and, and I know you know this, when you talk to them off the record, many of his tweets, many of his positions, they're embarrassed by, and also they feel unstable because they don't know what direction he's going to go Did in. Did he ever finish his time. tweet this morning? I mean, he <laughs> left it with a dot, dot, dot. I'm sure there's more to come. More to come. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs> and Can and I ask more. you a question? You're going to be sitting on this incredibly powerful committee, uh, and you will have been a majority uh, in January. There's so much that you could theoretically look into, but there's only so much bandwidth that a committee has. Right. 
how do you go about prioritizing and what do you think should be maybe let's say the top three things that the Judiciary Committee could be focusing on in the year ahead? Well, I, I think number one is basic oversight because oversight has sure, not been Sure, but within provided. that umbrella, what would you prioritize its issues specifically? Well, I mean, if I'm myself, it yeah. would certainly be looking at voting fraud. I mean, all of the concern about voting fraud in this last election, where were the two places where there was major voting fraud going on? North Carolina, what happened in Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, restoration of the Voting Rights Act is certainly something that is very high on our agenda. So I do think that there's a lot of things we want to do. Criminal justice reform. My own focus personally on criminal justice reform is going to be on gender because when you talk about criminal justice reform, it's often about men and the, the situation with women is completely different. different. Why women get involved, what happens when they're there, and what happens when they return to their communities. Congresswoman Karen Bass, thank you very much. Come thank back you, on the Congresswoman. show. Absolutely. Great to talk to you.